Hi, it's Solara here. I hope that your week is off to a wonderful start. Um, I'm sharing with you my word for your week with Solara, which is an exclusive weekly feature um, that I publish for my Substack patrons. And I w wanted to take the opportunity to share it with the wider YouTube community today. So I hope that this message is insightful, that it brings confirmation, um, affirmation, that it helps you to um, acclimate yourself with what is happening planetarily speaking and through ascension right now and how um, you can best utilize these energies for your own sense of empowerment and rising. And if you are interested in joining me over on Substack for more messages like this, as well as um, a lot of written <laughs> content, as well as audio also, um, and for my monthly and annual patrons, um, an opportunity to meet with me every month for a group Q&A session, then please make sure to avail yourself of the links on the screen. Um, that would be dailyalchemy.substack.com or substack.com forward slash at Solara. You can find me at either address. Okay, so without further ado, here is your word for your week with Solara. Take care. Welcome to another Word for Your Week with Solara. I hope you guys are doing well and that your week is already off to a good start. Um, a thank you once again to those of you who showed up for this month's um, group Q&A. For you guys, my Substack monthly and annual patrons, it's always a pleasure to meet with you guys. It's always um, a beautiful time of fun and fellowship and, and intimacy. And I really do uh, look forward to our, our monthly meetups. So um, thank you for being you. Thank you for healing. And thank you for being here. Okay, so let's get into the messages I have coming through. Today's been a bit of a rough day for me. It began um, beautifully. And then uh, like in the late afternoon, I came to settle to do some work and I started to not feel well. So um, if you are going through the ups and downs of uh, the clearing of densities, um, ascension symptoms, whether you're dealing with it, you know, more on the mental, emotional, or for me today, it's more on the physical planes. Um, I see you. I feel you. I'm sending you love. You've got this. Uh, you were made for such a time as this. Your soul chose to be here in this moment because you are more than equipped to overcome everything and anything um, that comes into your path, onto your path, um, anything you've already also been through that right now these solar flares are here helping you to get to the bottom of and clear the densities um, to to get to to your truth and the freedom and the liberation you need to live and walk in that truth without um, any kind of self-contempt which is left over you know false matrix programming you've got it you, you've, you're more than a conqueror and you are more than able to overcome everything and anything that comes into your reality. Okay, so what I was feeling and sensing, I have the cards out already, but what I was hearing as I was getting ready, I heard a breath of life. And I just heard that statement. And as I mulled over it, um, in my mind, as I was setting up, I was just like a breath of life. And then I started to connect to that energy of breath. And um, now I'm even thinking about the Hebrew word for Holy Spirit, which is Ruach. And, um, and then I'm connecting also to the dragons. And I'm thinking about how much they are through these solar flares, breathing their fire and waking us up and resurrecting us back into our truth and helping us to clear those densities and things that have blocked us from being able to see who we are and um, embrace who we are again. And that's what it feels like this week. Um, the focus is on for many of us, but in a very specific area, and that is our mind. And as I say that, the sun has astrologically moved into the sign of Gemini as of today. I believe uh, today is a zero degree Gemini sun. So we are in a Gemini portal. We are being welcomed into the Gemini energy. And if you are viewing this on an astronomical or true sky astrology level, then today is a day where the sun, I believe, might be entering Taurus. I don't know. It's not always exactly... Um, you know, in sync. So um, it might still be in Aries. I don't know. But it, it, we're, we're, we're going into that Taurus energy in the true sky, or um, we might already be there. But astrologically speaking, the sun is at zero degrees Gemini. <clears throat> and Gemini is the third sign of the zodiac wheel. 
and the last sign of the first quarter of the zodiac wheel. And the first quarter of the zodiac wheel has a lot to do with our ability to merge the spiritual planes with the mental planes in order to come up with an idea for who we are and who we're embracing ourselves as being in the next cycle. And what I mean by that is that um, we at every turn have a choice to hold on to certain narratives, stories, um, even identities, right? So the false matrix like to have us constantly betraying ourselves, rejecting ourselves, living in shame stories, living in other beings' projections under, you know, uh, control and manipulation and spell work so that we, we weren't really seeing who we were and we therefore were creating these false personas in order to be accepted. So when we did that, we were accepting stories about ourselves and we were building our lives off of that mental energy or off of that belief system that we um, had allowed to be, uh, you know, erected around us and through us really is what it comes down to. And um, as we heal and as we rise and as we evolve, we our minds begin to change. Our consciousness begins to expand and we begin to see things about ourselves that we weren't able to see before. We begin to see how um, the false matrix worked to constantly keep us small and it even utilized other beings and their woundedness and our own woundedness to, to kind of um, have us constantly projecting, deflecting and accepting you know, uh, uh, devaluation energy, false narratives about the truth of our worth. And so as we heal and we heal our minds and how we are viewing ourselves and we are connecting to our spiritual truth, then we begin to build a life based upon this higher uh, resonance of who we are. Now, it doesn't mean we've reached the pinnacle of everything we are, but we begin to climb. And that's what ascension is. So every time time the sun returns into Aries and every time any planet goes into Aries or into Taurus or Gemini, as it moves through those three signs, we are dealing very, very heavily with our mindset and with the mindset that we are establishing based upon the spiritual truth about ourselves at the time that we are able to access. So now we're entering into the first um, mutable sign of the zodiac wheel, which is Gemini, and the third sign of the zodiac wheel, and the last in the first quarter. So we're completing something with the, this merging of spiritual and mental energy through the Gemini processes. And Gemini, um, all the mutable signs kind of um, worked as a, uh, they worked to integrate they work to integrate the cardinal and the fixed sign, the fixed energy that comes before them. So as we move into Gemini season, um, Gemini energy as a mutable sign is here to help us integrate the lessons that we learned through Aries and Taurus season. But Gemini is also here to help us expand our consciousness as far as we can in accordance with this new mindset we have and to begin to match us with the spiritual information to go into, you know, the Akashics, the universal records to begin to pull in the information that we need to begin to match this higher state of thinking and this um, higher mental energy that we've been able to access through the clearing of the false stories. And later on in the year, when the sun enters Virgo, which is the final sign on the, um, that, that me makes a half point of the zodiac wheel, so it's the last sign of the second quarter, every quarter of the zodiac wheel ends with a mutable energy. So the first quarter, it's Gemini, second quarter, it's Virgo, third quarter, it's Sagittarius. And then finally, we have at the end of the zodiac wheel, Pisces, which shows us how the mutable energy works to help us to integrate and to kind of sort out what it is that has already been established. We've already made a choice through Taurus. Our choice at this point is kind of, um, it's pretty fixed, it's pretty established, you know, and then the Gemini energy comes in to help us um, make provision 
further provision to cement that energy and to integrate it into um, the everyday realities of life. That's kind of how um, uh, the, the mutable signs, it helps us to walk out the energy. Yes. So right now we're starting this week with this Gemini energy and I will always joke, I, I get on very well with Geminis for the most part, a Gemini suns, because um, to me, they're like the fire signs of the air element. <laughs> so they've got this fiery energy that seems to, the Gemini energy just seems to work very well with fire signs a lot of the time. Um, so it's a very fiery energy, the Gemini energy, even though it's air. Um, and so this whole idea of a breath of life coming through, it's, um, it's new possibilities, but it's based upon our ability to rise up and take the mantle of the new truths that we've been able to unearth about ourselves based upon the previous healing cycles and also all the help we're receiving through the solar flares and the ascension energies. So um, at the bottom of the deck, we do have the daughter of swords, which in traditional tarot is a page of swords. So right off the bat, we've got this um, air energy. Swords connects us to the element of air and the court cards connect us to all the air signs. So Gemini, um, Aquarius and Libra. So we've got the page of swords. And whenever we're dealing with page energy, no matter what suit, we're dealing with um, a new branch within a cycle that has already begun, but it's a new chapter, you could say. So if you're dealing with ace energy, it's a brand new cycle. But if you're dealing with page energy, it's like a, a, a new section within that cycle that the ace began, you could kind of say. So we're, think, we're, we're speaking now about a new um, chapter in terms of mental energies. And uh, this is based upon our ability now to reconnect or to get back um, the full authority of our conscious creatorhood, meaning that once upon a time, we left our minds and our mental space quite open. We were quite passive with what we allowed into our mental energy because we didn't know who we were and we didn't get that electromagnetically. Everything we're taking into our fields on all levels has an effect on our internal settings and our internal settings are what determine what we create materially and what we experience. So if we are very open and we are easily manipulated, our internal settings are easily manipulated by uh, being in the company of people who don't think highly of us or other people's words or, uh, you know, using our own inner monologue to tear ourselves down, then we are constantly putting ourselves into um, like disharmonious uh, realities internally that then we're manifesting discord in our external reality and we couldn't figure out why. But now we're seeing, we, we've got... Um, we're getting a good grip of who we are, how this thing works, how the false matrix was designed to constantly keep us taking in things that would mess with our internal settings, mess with our perception of ourselves, one another, and the world. And so now it's time for a new way of seeing and thinking that's going to align um align us higher with our divine truth so we can begin to create from our true internal settings of peace and harmony with self. And so this energy this week is feeling like it's helping us to get our minds right and ripe for that endeavor. So at the top of the, at the, um, the overarching theme, we have the God of Swords, which is the King of Swords. This is the mastery of mental energy, the mastery of the Swords energy, but it's also the masculine uh, mastery and the masculine concept of mental energy. So this is where we begin to take action now based upon who we know we are. It's one thing to know who you are. It's another thing to start living like you know who you are. And this energy this week is here. Like I said, that Gemini energy is fiery. It gives you confidence if you allow it to. This is the week to begin to confidently own the things that you've been learning about yourself, the things that you've been untapping. And it's also that God of Swords energy is highly protective. It don't take shit. 
Okay, it's very legalistic. It's very, um, you know, it sets its boundaries. It's very logical, you know, and so it's also a weak um, to be that way with with the things that we're allowing still in our mental space. Are there areas where we can still be more disciplined in how we're thinking about ourselves or the thoughts we're allowing to, um, we're allowing ourselves to entertain or the mental energies, the thoughts, the opinions, the voices that we still allow to invade our consciousness and have an effect on how we think and how we feel. It's time to become even more serious, diligent, and disciplined about the protection of what we allow to run through our minds, right? So there's that, uh, a say, uh, you know, that saying where you, um, uh, that, where it said that it, you're allowing someone to live in your mind rent free. They don't give a fuck about you, and and you're spending so much time thinking about them. They're living in your reality uh, rent free, and it's time to like evict those energies that shouldn't be up in your mental fields because they're bringing you into places of distress and disharmony. They're not helping you to elevate and to create um, a life or a foundation of peace from which you can continue to to blossom. Well, first root and then blossom and grow. Okay, so um, we do have in the challenge position, the hanged one. The hanged one is Neptunian energy. It connects us to Pisces energy. It's all about that smoke screen and mirrors energy of the false matrix. It's about the inversion where everything is back to front. Nothing is as it seems. And this has been one of the biggest lessons we've had to learn and overcome because at every turn in this false matrix, it's designed to make us feel as if we're supposed to trust our eyes before we trust our our own intuition and internal guidance. And through this healing process, we've been learning that everything that we experience visually and materially so far has really been an illusion. And it's time for us to tune into the truth of the inversion and recognize and realize that the ways we were programmed by the false matrix were designed also to keep us pledging our allegiance to the illusion. So for example, the way that we view and we perceive an energy is always going to be based upon our own programming and the experiences we've had. So when something discouraging comes into our realities, oftentimes we automatically fall into despair because that's what we've been taught to to do. We were taught to constantly find the hopelessness to make us even more dependent on these external systems and programs that were designed to keep us out of our power. But the truth of the matter is that when something comes into our reality that might be discouraging, It's just showing us where we need to fine tune something to go higher. It's not something to despair about. It's a gift. It's showing us uh, something that we need to tweak. It's as simple as that. But because we also have lived in a world where everything is about succeeding and producing and nobody wants to fail or make a mistake because you're shamed for that, a lot of the time um, we have an aversion to these things. And, and when discouragement comes in, we feel like we're, we're losing, we're failing. And really all we're doing is we're learning, we're expanding, we're growing, we're being given another opportunity to see something that we weren't seeing before that was actually getting in the way. So I use that as an example, because these are the kinds of things that this week we're being invited to, we're being invited and assisted to, to, to do you know, to really begin to master the energy of the inversion. But more importantly, because it's not even about the false matrix at this time, their illusions are crumbling. They, they, you know, they're, they're not lasting anymore. More importantly, it's about our ability to tap into our power, because that's what it comes down to. Um, when you are feeling, when something comes into your reality and you're feeling discouraged, you can disempower yourself by believing that the issue is bigger than you, or you can empower yourself by knowing that you have the solution and recognizing it's just a lesson for your own uh, further soul ad- advancement. And it's completely two different mindsets that will take you on completely different paths. And yet the trigger um, for the, for, for uh, setting you forward or pulling you back, it's the same thing. So how do you want to use that energy? How do you want to utilize the power of your mind to get you now where you need to go instead of getting you stuck? Okay, so... Um, 
what it is you need to be aware of that you might not be completely focused on, right? This is a six of pentacles, which is the minor arcana justice card. So this is all about things are being balanced, but they're being balanced in, in real time on the earth planes, in your material reality. Everything is coming back into order for as long as you let it. Now, the six of pentacles is also Taurus energy. It's the third deacon of Taurus. So this is also speaking about what we're coming out of. Everything is coming into order. I've been giving that message for a while because it's true. And if you, um, you know, have the eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart that inner and overstands this because you're in tune with your own value and therefore you see the value in everything and how it's coming into place and you'll know that's, that's the truth. Everything is coming into order. It might not feel good. It might not be happening as fast as we want it to, but it is, right? So in the uh, guidance position, we have another mutable energy. We have the Ten of Cups, which is Pisces energy. And Pisces is another sign that deals with closure. It's the final sign of the Zodiac. And this Ten of Cups energy is the final deacon of Pisces energy. So it's at 20 to 29 degrees of Pisces. This is the wrapping up of something. So this is the wrapping up this week also of emotional stories that have kept us out of the fullness of emotional fulfillment. And it has a lot to do with how we've interacted with other groups of beings, groups of people, whether it's family, friends, work colleagues, it's how we've established ourselves in group dynamics based upon our wounding and all the ways we've had to rise and heal ourselves from subjugating ourselves to these false personas in order to be accepted. This is a week where that again is going to be um, highlighted for us to see how far we've come and to see where it is we're going and what we're willing to accept now when it comes to who we spend and we invest our time in, in terms of romance, family, friends. Um, are we able to be in our power um, and are we able to feel emotionally fulfilled in the company of certain certain people and if we're not it's time again to consider how does the dynamic have to shift what conversations need to be had maybe with that person but more importantly with yourself you know where is it time to level up in all ways in terms of what we'll accept in accordance with our new newly um, established value that we're, we're dealing with through the Taurus energy right? So um, that's what I have for you. I hope that this reading was helpful and insightful. A lot of processing in both the mental and emotional bodies this week as we moved through the final um, uh, sign of the first quarter of the zodiac. We're moving out of the mental, the purely spiritual and mental space, and we're segueing now where the mental and the emotional bodies begin to, um, begin to uh, be the focus Okay, so anyway, I'm sending you so much love. I will be back again tomorrow with your daily alchemy and I wish you a beautiful week. Take care.